knock out another one. We got your boy Drake. Another, another super, super young legend in the game. He came out with Thank Me Later. Drake is one of the most well-known artists of the new generation. We knew about him earlier because the first song he had was Best I Ever Had. That came out about 2009. Um, he's he's known he's known in Degrassi. Everybody figured out that he used to be an actor, and this and all this and all this. But um, let's get into the let's get into the albums. So you got Alicia Keys, which she tried to get into a relationship with, but Alicia Keys ended up choosing Swiss Beat. And at this time, he was signed to Young Money. Young Money came in with the uh, compilation album, introducing everybody. Uh, you had Wayne, Drake, Nicki, Tiger, Gutta Gutta, Chanel, Lil Twist, Lil Chucky, J Mills. I think that said Mac Main was the president. I think I got everybody. Uh, we got a Mary J. Blige verse, or he's on the hook. Ironically, Swiss Beats is on. <laughs> oh, you see that shit? Yo, the track listings on a lot of these albums tell tell you a lot about what's really going on and and all this. I know on um YG's album, his first album, his first studio album, My Crazy Life. Um, uh, there was a song called My Nigga and they did a remix and Meek Mill and Nicki Minaj is on the remix Meek Mill decided to shoot his shot see so when you look at the track listing on shit it tells you a lot about who's connected with who <laughs> and what's really going on and um I know a lot of people going again try to follow this trend once these videos get more views. But both Alicia Keys and Swiss Beats was on that Drake album, and Drake just tried uh, decided to try to shoot his shot with Alicia Keys, but a girl already makes up her mind beforehand. So Alicia and Swiss Beats probably had a thing going on for a while. I got a Ti verse, the Dream. Jeezy, Jay Z, this boss Wayne, and this is where it starts to trend. Where um, Drake, Wayne, and Nicki, uh, they're they're mostly on each other's albums. So, oh, and he has a Jay Z verse too, and Jay and um, Drake was on the Blueprint three earlier. So, it's fast to take care, 2011. I was in college at this time. In the late 2011, I went to college. August 2011, I went to college. <clears throat> Just a year after I graduated. And um, a lot of people in college, a lot of dudes in college said, man, I remember one time I asked this dude if he listened to Take Care. He was like, I'm not gay. I was confused. I'm like, what? I asked him again. I'm like, yo, you, you listen to Drake, you listen to Take Care? He said, I'm not gay. So, <laughs> you know, um, I think he got a Grammy for this album. That's a very smooth album. You know. He got a weekend. Oh, this is when he was working with Weekend too. He got a Rihanna verse. He's trying to get with Rihanna now. Alicia Keys fell through, so he's trying to get with Rihanna now. Kendrick Lamar, see Rihanna and Kendrick Lamar. I'm not saying they're together. I'm just saying they end up doing projects together. Um, and this is when he, uh, him and Kendrick Lamar had a falling out. Drake and Kendrick Lamar had a secret falling out. And I heard some greasy shit was said. 
some greasy shit was said behind the scenes. Uh, Birdman, Lone Wayne's boss, Mickey, of course, Rick Ross. <clears throat> this will be his last Rick Ross verse for a while. Um, Andre 3000. Put Tiger on here. Um, Tiger ended up on a remix. Then Tiger, Tiger just said he didn't really like Drake like that. Didn't like his vibe. And then you got a, you got a, um, and then Drake and Tiger was in a little secret beef, and all this. Uh, that's why Tiger wasn't as involved with Young Money as Drake, Wayne, and and uh, Nicki were. They were those three used to always work together. Tiger kind of worked with them. <clears throat> Nothing was the same. Oh, wait, what's the known songs on here? I think the most known, most notable song. Oh, the motto, YOLO. You only live once. That's where that's where YOLO comes from. This the song, the motto. That's where YOLO comes from. Next, we got nothing was the same. Uh, he 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 tried to work with Wu Tang on here. And I think one of the Wu Tang members said something stupid, and uh, RZA, RZA had to coach them and say, "Man, no, you, you don't do that. You know what I mean? We we legends. We could have worked with younger artists. We could work with younger artists. Y'all sitting here dissing this man." But by that time, it was already too late, and Drake was like, "Eh, whatever." Uh, he did do a song with uh, Capadonna. Capadonna's got background vocals on there. I got a uh, Wu Tang Forever. Oh, see, he wanted to put Wu Tang on there, and um, Wu Tang learned their lesson by working with Logic at the end of the day, because Logic decided to work with them, and and they 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 decided to listen to that and, and, and follow with that. But um, I got a version with ASAP Rocky on it, and these these are my um, these are my Instagram days when I first started. I uh, got Party Next Door. Janae Eichel, Trey the Truth, Birdman Detail, Sampha, Jay Z, Two Chains, and Big Sean. The most notable song on here started from the bottom. And All Me. Now this is a mixtape. We're gonna count this as an album. Um, I'm trying to think what happened. So 2014 again. I mentioned the YG shit. I'm gonna go into the YG shit once we get to YG. But um, YG or uh, Meek Mill and Nicki Minaj met each other through YG. It's a bunch of bullshit and drama going on. And, um, allegedly, Nikki said some wild shit, as females do. As females do. And, um, Meek Mill tweeted some shit that, uh, put Drake in a very, <laughs> very awkward spot for the rest of his life. Uh, he exposed some ghostwriter. He exposed that, uh, Drake allegedly had a ghostwriter. And, um, he was just mad because Nikki said some shit to tug at his ego. Women always tug at your ego. They're always going to tug at your ego. Because at the end of the day, sometimes they like you and they know you're the man and they know you got, you know, balls. But they just, they feel like they have they have to keep testing you. They ha it's, it's in their nature. I think maybe Miller should have just kept his mouth shut. But again... Uh, the only features on here is Wayne and Travis Scott. And I added back to back on here. Uh, and Party Next Door, too. So. The alleged ghostwriter, I forgot that motherfucker's name, too. Quentin Miller. 
that's that's the last Ghost Rider. And uh, to this day, Drake will never be able to live that down. All because of Nikki and, and me. And then we got views. I feel like views is more for Canada. I don't understand views. I think view again views is more is more from a ca Canadian perspective. I mean, I think he's their dialect. I just I don't understand this album, and I'm pretty sure that's what he was going with, just a more Canadian style. Introducing a Canadian style on things. He got a, he got he brought he brought in Wizkid with the one dance. Every time I hear one dance, I have to fucking drink. Every fucking time I hear one dance, I have to fucking drink. It makes me kind of horny too. Uh, what else is on there? This <laughs> nine six upside down is a nine now. Uh, um. Controller, pop style, and hotline playing. <laughs> Where he did dance and shit, you know. Oh, and then he had a beef with Chris Brown. And I don't want to go too much into it. I'll probably go more into it with the Chris Brown shit since they do got a feature together on his newest album. Uh, then you got More Life. What was the song that? Passion Fruit. Yo, that song is fucking crazy. Um, at December 16. What was the song? Oh, Fake Love. Fake Love was the song he was known for. He got features like Young Thug, Kanye West before they started beefing. Tough because of the uh, Push the T situation. British rapper Gigs. Two Chains, Quavo, DJ Khaled, Wayne, Georgia Smith. Georgia Smith has an incredible album. I'm going to be going to her, too. And Snow Allegra. I'm going to be going to Snow Allegra and making her more positive as well. And last but not least, Scorpion. At the tail end of the Pusha T verse. The Pusha T fucking beef. Drake decides to drop Scorpion. He started with Upset. There's not much features on here. Um... Every Drake album has a different style to it. He's showing that he's versatile. Uh, what else? Nice for What was a song he put out. And uh, what was that song? Keep My Feelings. Kiki, do you love me? Don't matter with Michael Jackson. I don't know how the fuck he got a Michael Jackson verse. Uh, my Feelings with the City Girls. Wayne's in the background. Blue Tint, one of my favorite joints. That's how you feel with Nicki Minaj. Stefflon Don. Hove. Oh, and God's Plan. There's hits on this motherfucker. <clears throat> so Drake is one of the young legendary rappers. The young, One of the more young legendary rappers like Wiz Khalifa. The new age legendary rappers. Um, Drake discography is is pretty decent as well. Um, yeah, that's about it. I don't have too much to say on Drake. Plenty of beef, even though he said in the beginning he would never beef with anybody. He's beef with Jay Z, Kanye West, Pusha T, Meek Mill, Tyga, Nicki Minaj. He's had the most beefs I've ever seen. Joe Budden. <laughs> I mean, he's just beef with everybody, so. Anyway. Peace.